right guys, uh, it's been quite a while since I've done a tutorial, but I'm here with the dugout tutorial. I've been promising this for a while, I've been a little bit slow, I do apologize. Thanks for sticking around. We're gonna get straight into this, this is a pretty simple song. By the end of this, you will be able to play through this song very fluidly, very accurately. And I do want to give a special thanks to my friend Joe for helping me out with some of the parts that I could not figure out on my own, especially towards the end. So thank you to Joe for that. This tutorial is also going to be a lot higher audio quality. My amp is now mic'd up, and I'm also going to be showing my amp settings and my pedal board settings at the end of this because a lot of you guys requested that. A few of these things I'm going to teach with a couple different options so you can choose from, have some fun with it but we do strive for 100% accuracy and as close as we can get to the record. Standard tuning, capo on the second fret. The first opening chord is an A major bar chord. After that, it's a weird shape, but it's five, seven, six, six. Five on the low E, seven on the A, six on both the D and the G. You could also kind of have a little bit more embellishment with it and go. So you'll be strumming both the A and the D, hammering on to that fourth fret on the D. Both of those sound really good. So that's how the intro will go, and it's gonna go back to those chords again. And then after that, Josh's picking part is going to come in. That will be just as follows. I really like sustaining the vibrato on the last note. So that intro will sound like this. So you're going to repeat Josh's picking part three times along with those chords and then it will eventually change once Jonah starts singing again saying I don't want to drop the bomb today but I don't Two chords right there. First one is sort of like a G shape. I mean, it is a G shape. Seventh fret on the A, sixth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G and the B as well. The second chord is a C variation. This is actually the same chord that's in maple syrup, the second one. You're gonna go through those with this strumming pattern. So after he stops singing and those two chords are stopped playing, he's gonna go into a melodic picking part, which I really love. That C variation chord that I just taught you, slide that all the way up to the 12th fret on the A. You can lift up your pinky, keep the other fingers down as they were. <laughs> Slide that back up to the same spots, but this time the picking pattern will change. That's pretty simple. That melodic picking part will go on for quite a while. At least that's how I play it. So once the chords come in, back to that A major bar chord. Might sound better with the bridge pickup. This 
this time you're lifting up your index as you can see as I was playing. <laughs> Just like that. Every once in a while, there's gonna be a breakup between those two and you'll have an E minor shaped chord. That's just the fourth fret on the A and the D. playing that E minor about twice and on the second one it's gonna die down and go into that other melodic picking part. <laughs> And for this part, I typically turn on reverb and I'm on the bridge pickup and it sounds really, really nice. This is probably my favorite part of the song, this part right here. After that E chord and it dies down for a split second, you're gonna hear some picking coming in, which is Josh's part. The only string you will be fretting for this is the D string and you're gonna be leaving the B and the G open as well. And you're gonna slowly hear that picking come in and it'll get a little bit louder. So you're gonna go through it three times before you start sliding. <laughs> On the first line of this, because it goes through a few times, you'll be sliding up and down on all of the notes, but after you get back down here to the fourth fret, after the first time going through, you will only slide up, okay? So you won't slide back down. <laughs> So after that end, you're gonna go into a C shape, but leaving your index finger off. So just a C, remove your index, and then muting the low E, of course. Seventh fret on the low E. Ninth fret on both the A and the D. That E minor shape again, so that part should sound like this. Make sure you get that little bend in there. Go through it again the same way, except you're ending on the G and you're not bending right here. So that part should sound like this. So you can either do that part, which is the record, and he just stays on that G, lifting off your index, doing that little rotation again. Or you can kind of do the live sound, which this is what Joe taught me. 12th fret on the A, 13th on the G, 14th on the B. Roll off your volume knob, play that, roll it back on. I like to just step on my Hall of Fame and get that mash effect, but Josh likes to get feedback from his amp. Uh, but you get the idea. If you've heard him play it live, then you know what I'm talking about. Then you can end that part before the solo kicks in on the 16th fret of the high E. And then the solo is gonna drop.
So to get started on the solo part like I just played, you're gonna take that C-shaped variation that I taught you earlier, slide it all the way up to the 12th fret on the A. Just hold the same shape. You should have this. And that's that. The strumming pattern, um, I don't really know how to explain it other than to just play it. And then after that, he's gonna come over here Open A string, 14, 14, 14 after that on the D, G, and B with the open A. He's gonna play that a few times, same strumming pattern, and then he's gonna go back to that same first chord I just taught you and leave the open E this time. So when you're starting this, you're gonna have the E muted until you go back to it, okay? And then you're gonna restart that process muting the low E string, go back into the open 14, 14, 14, but this time halfway through, instead of going back to that first chord, place your ring finger on the 16th fret of that G string. So that whole solo part should sound like this. Almost done here guys, we're getting right at the end. After you get done with that part, you're gonna come down here to the seventh fret on the G string, slide up from the seventh to the ninth fret on the G string, slide down from the ninth to the seventh on the G string. You don't always have to slide back down to the seventh, but he does do it a few times. So after you do that part three times, he's gonna come down here to the fourth fret on the G string, slide up from the fourth to the sixth, go down to the fifth fret on the B. After that, there's a quick pull off sequence. That'll be fourth fret on the G, pulling off to the open G two times. Same thing on the D string, but once. Go back up to the first sequence, do that two more times. Ending it on the seventh fret on that D, and here is the end of the solo. Ninth fret, 11th fret, 13, 14, 16, and on that 16, bend up. I also kind of like the unison bend on the 16th fret, if you wanna do that. If you don't like the way that sounds, that's fine. It's just something I kind of like to do. Otherwise, just bend up on the 16th. So that whole part should sound like this. So after you bend up on that 16th fret, the C shape without your index. Um, kind of palm muted and you're gonna be hammering on, pulling off with your middle finger G string fourth fret, okay? And then after that, you're gonna go open G string, hammer on to the second, slide up to the fourth. And then go back to that A shape again, lifting off with your index. So that is the end of the song, guys. I hope that helps. This is definitely a good solo tutorial, very accurate. If you do have any corrections for what I might have messed up on, please do leave it below. I will have a pinned comment with any corrections made in the future to this tutorial. I did promise you guys I would show off my amp and pedal board settings at the end of this video. This is the same amp that Josh uses and it's what I use in every single one of my videos that you hear. 
I do not use the same settings as him on purpose because I've already copied him enough. Moving on to my board, I now have the same pork loin overdrive that Josh has been using since the early days in the band, so this really helps get the same sound. I also have the same Hall of Fame 2 reverb that he uses. For Dugout though, I'm really only using my Empress Compressor Mark II and my Hall of Fame 2 reverb for this song. I'm not really using the overdrive, but I did want to point that out. I hope this helps guys. Thanks for watching.